All right, welcome. This is the Algebra 1 EOC practice test 2, the one on the website. Um, question number 36. This one looks really complicated, but there's a million ways uh, you could get this right. We're going to show you two ways, or I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, the big thing is to set it up properly. A lot of times, just setting up the problem gets you a long way to where you need to be. The question says the length of the base and the height of the triangle are labeled below. What expression represents the area of the triangle in terms of x? Now, they tell me this formula is 1 half base times height. If they give you a formula, write it down. So I'm going to write down 1 half base times height. Now from here, what I need to look at is what the base is and what the height is. Well, the base would be the bottom part, and the height would be the height part. I don't even know why you'd need to have that explained, but I explained it anyway, whatever. And I'm going to pop that 1 half in front. Now, as you can see, all of the answer choices, or you could see if you look at them, all the answer choices have 1 half in them. So I'm not even going to concern myself with it. I'm just, it's there, so I'm going to deal with it however I deal with it. From here, what I need to do is um, factor out, and I'm going to use FOIL, you know, to do x minus 7 times x minus 8. I'm also going to show you how to do it if you lose your mind and forget how to do that. But let's do the uh, factoring part first, or the multiplying the binomial section here. Now I need to do, essentially in my head, I mean you could use FOIL, so front, outside, inside, last if you like. I tend to think, okay, I just need to make sure that everything in the first uh, binomial is multiplied by everything in the second. So I'm going to do x times x, which is of course x squared. Then I'm going to do x times negative 8, and I'm going to get negative 8x. Then I do negative 7 times x, and I get minus 7x. And then I do negative 7 times negative 8, and I get plus 56. Now I just need to combine like terms here, and my middle uh, two terms are like terms. Actually, I don't need to, I don't know why I put a line under that one, that's confusing. Everything's a like term now. We're all like one. This one is x squared, so I took two lines under it. That's just how I find like terms. So negative 8 minus 7, of course, is minus 15x. And I can tell that at this point it's a subtract relationship just because there's a sign in between them and they're not touching. These touching indicate multiply. And then I remember from before, I just needed to stab that one half on the front, and then I'm good to go. So my answer for this one um, should be D. I don't know why I got so weirded out about that. I think I thought I looked at it wrong or something. Um, now, I have the answer this way. That's how you can do it if you factor it out. Now, what happens if you lose your mind? It's possible that you will. I've lost mine millions of times. So let me bring up the calculator, and I'll show you a little trick that you can use that, once again, I've said in other videos, I'm not proud that it works, but it does work. Now, the half thing and setting it up, you're still going to have to do. So if you can't even be bothered to write down a formula and set it up, I, you might be doomed. I don't know. Maybe you're a good guesser. Who knows? Anyway, so if I've got my x minus 7, x minus 8 thing, I need to look at my x value. So I'm going to hit x and enter. And it says that it's 10. As long as it's not 0, this trick usually works. If it is 0, you can change it by changing your window range values for x and then graphing something, and it'll change it to whatever you set it as. Um, I've done that in other videos, so just search around. Now, I have x minus 7 times x minus 8. I'm not going to worry about the half thing. So I'm going to type in x minus 7. And then I'm going to type in x minus 8. I'm going to hit enter, and I get 6. What I'm going to do is write that number down on my paper somewhere like right in here. Now what I'm going to do is see if I can type in this one, this one, this one, and this one, and see which one of them gives me 6. It doesn't list any sort of um, exceptions in the domain here, so I'm pretty resolute in the idea that the one that matches is going to be the right answer. So if I try the first one, x squared minus 56. It gives me 44, so obviously A is not the correct answer. So if I want to, I can go ahead and mark it out. Now, I think that the answer is D, so I'm going to test that theory by typing in X squared. Oops, I hit it twice for some weird reason. That I'd probably do the same thing, but I'm not going to take any chances. Minus 15X plus 56. You can see that this, here, that this part here looks exactly like what's in parentheses in D, so I'm going to hit Enter and it gives me 6. The 6 is match, so I know that this matches this original setup. So I can get the same answer uh, without having to do any of the whole multiplying polynomials business, uh, but I don't suggest you use it. There's not a lot of mathematical validity to it. It's like worst case scenario that you would have to use this, but even if you did, did the, do this correctly and you forgot to set it up correctly, it's probably still going to be wrong. So there's a couple ways that you can do it. Hopefully you can find some benefit in it, and uh, good luck on your end of course test.